dark, dark journey of an innovator. We meet someone who went to work 15 years in a, in a row to do the same, to work on the same problem every day. So how do you even do that, right? How do you wake up every day and say that this is a problem that I'm going to work on and not one year or two years, 15 years in a row. And that's a tall ask. But what came out of it was truly amazing. Do you know we have the first rotavirus vaccine? That was the cheapest drug vaccine in the world that Bharat Biotech just introduced. I'm sure you, some of you have heard about it. And let's hear how the breakthrough, this breakthrough actually came about. And to that, I would like to invite Mr. Dr. Dr. Harshwardhan from Bharat Biotech. And joining him in conversation, I'd like to invite Mr. Sunil Vadhwani. Several of you know him as uh, chairman of iGate, but the title that's more dear to us is a hat that he wears as founder donor of Vadhwani Institute of Sustainable Healthcare. So as you've seen, uh, rotavirus disease is a very serious disease, right? As you see, it affects over 100 million people every year, kills almost half a million people every year, mainly in developing countries. So a very, very serious issue. Now, it can be treated with a vaccination. A vaccine for this has been around for the last multiple years. The challenge is this vaccine has been extremely expensive, extremely expensive and unaffordable to people in developing countries, which is why we have these terrible numbers. Uh, a local company, Bharat Biotech, announced just a few weeks ago that they had had a breakthrough and had come up with a vaccine for the rotavirus disease costing less than a dollar each. And the gentleman behind that is Dr. Harshwardhan. Now, as Nisha said, this took a very long time. It took upwards of 15 years. In fact, I've heard it took as long as 25 years. So before we get into that, Dr. Harshwardhan, first question, what's the significance of this vaccine? Beyond what I've said, what's the significance of what you've developed? Yeah. In, in terms of uh, the mortality that uh, this, uh, up, this affects our nation, about 100,000 infants die every year in our country. And uh, people who, uh, children who do, uh, do get this uh, disease, they're sometimes they're hospitalized and there are two million hospitalizations. So the gravity of the situation is that hospitalizations cost money to the family and also to the government. And then unfortunately every year, so many of our infants were dying. And uh, that's the reason I think uh, quite some time ago, the journey started uh, for not only for Bharat Pitek, also for government of India. This is how it all started. Can I start at the beginning as to how it started off? Is um, uh, back in the 1986-88, in the uh, two year period time, uh, the pediatrics department of all India Institute of Medical Sciences, uh, uh, under the leadership of Dr. Maharaj K. Ban and his team, they found that there was uh, some uh, infants were getting, uh, were not getting the disease because of rotavirus, but they had diarrhea. And they felt that uh, the rest of the ch infants were getting diarrhea and suffering, but some group of children escaped. They had m very mild symptoms of uh, rotavirus diarrhea. And then they, they were protected against further diarrhea episodes uh, from rotavirus. Then they got an idea that maybe this particular virus, which was not really causing uh, the real symptoms of rotavirus uh, diarrhea could be considered as a vaccine candidate. So that's how the spark began. And I yesterday I was talking to someone else in the dinner, and they said, maybe do we ascribe that to serendipity? You know, that kind of a thought process to say that this uh, virus could be used. That was a long time ago. So 86, 88, and uh, sen some researchers uh, decided that they should characterize this, find out what kind of a um, identity it has, what is the epidemiology part of it, and that's how uh, during that time uh, there was an Indo-US vaccine action program under the Department of Bi Biotechnology, Government of India, and then uh, these researchers approached DBT under the US, uh, Indo-US VAP program to find out whether they could con continue to do research on this, and that's how uh, our country got connected to the US uh, specialists, and so we had a journey with that began with the Department of Biotechnology with the Indo-US Vaccine Action Program. And because of that, we got connected to the cent Centers for Disease Control in the US and to National Institute of Health in the US, Stanford University. So it is just not Bharat Biotech, but it was a, a, a public-private sector consortium 
and with the whole idea of to have a social innovation uh, attached to this fund. So we got into the act in 1999. All along, uh, this virus was, rotavirus was uh, handled, characterized, and it was determined that this is a, a virus which is not causing rotavirus, serious rotavirus diarrhea. So in terms of the, the kind of language we use, it, it is an attenuated, like poliovirus have been strains. And this was, uh, this particular virus under the Indo-US uh, uh, vaccine action program was sent to US for further uh, characterization. And it was there in their uh, repositories until about 95. And the National Institute of Health at the time, they contacted with the private organization there to make it into a vaccine candidate. What we call is a seed material of uh, this particular strain so that that could be that could be given to others, but no one was taking up the challenge because this was an unknown virus. Uh, a lot of other vaccines, what we give it to our children, uh, all the strains are fully known, approved by a lot of uh, uh, national regulatory agencies, but this was an unknown virus. I think that's the reason it, it just stayed in the deep freezers uh, of uh, National Institute of Health, the USA. It went from Delhi to, uh, uh, to Bethesda, and then uh, our chairman, Dr. Krishnayala, who is uh, who is the first generation entrepreneur and uh, he always talks about innovation right from the beginning, uh, he was asked to consider whether he would take up this and that was early stages for Bharat Biotech. We had just uh, finished with uh, making a hepatitis B vaccine and then he decided, took up a big, big risk uh, in, 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 uh, in committing uh, himself and the organization to the development of this vaccine. So we started at Bharat Biotech our journey in 1999 motivated through the journey? How do you keep your team motivated through the journey? People who leave, how do you bring in new people when the time scale is like this? Because that's something I think all of us can learn some lessons from. Thank you. I think the challenge uh, that kept us going, uh, going at Bharat Biotech was that if we succeed in making this vaccine, rotavirus vaccine, we would be the first company in India to have made a vaccine from an Indian strain, and uh, we being an Indian company by an Indian uh, vaccine manufacturer for our own children, and if it works out during the clinical trials that it could also protect against various other strains of rotavirus, there is a possibility this vaccine could be used world over in, in the other developing countries too. I think that pride to, do, uh, to succeed in making this vaccine has kept us uh, going, and then, we had wonderful mentors uh, with us. Uh, we had experts in rotavirus, uh, not only the clinical aspect of it, but also doing the clinical uh, trials. Uh, Dr. Roger Glass, uh, can I mention some of the names? Uh, Dr. Roger Glass, of, uh, he was with Centers for Disease Control and now with the National Institute of Health, yes. He is a known world authority on rotavirus. He was with us. Uh, he used to give a lot of his time with us, uh, talk to us, uh, we had a lot of emails going on. I never expected a person of that eminence would contribute so much of his time and thoughts to us. That was uh, Dr. Roger Glass, and we had another great man in uh, Harry Greenberg of uh, Stanford University, dean of uh, that school. He's again an expert on rotaviruses. So we had this strength from our mentors and Dr. Maharaj K. Ban uh, here, and he later became the secretary for the de Department of Biotechnology. So we had wonderful support, and then we had one Dr. George Curlin of uh, Government of US, uh, who was dealing with the transfer of the strains to us and all that. So we had mentors. Uh, then we had uh, some scientists from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences and Indian Institute of Sciences at uh, Bangalore. Then PATH came into picture, Gates Foundation came into yeah. picture. So great, let, let me ask you a question based on that. So partners played a big role big in role. everything that you did. And I think for all of us over here, uh, who are trying to effect social change, partnerships are crucial. So what lessons do you draw from the kinds of partnerships that you did that you think could be used by all of us? How does one approach, you know, uh, uh, you know, what kind of strategy does one develop for getting partners? What do you look for in a partner? How do you ensure that a partnership is successful over time? Yeah, looking back, I think we had uh, great decisions made periodically by some of the mentors and uh, government of India officials which uh, kept us going as, as an example are that since we are going to take on a, an unknown virus and to get it approved to become a, a, a vaccine candidate, for instance, needed a lot of regulatory 
clearances. And we had to provide a lot of uh, uh, facts, a lot of uh, uh, data on the strain characteristics. And so uh, what we did was because of the kind of support we had from the Department of Biotechnology and also for all the other mentors, we were able to get several of our things internationally certified. So that would mean uh, the cell, cells in which we were growing this uh, rotavirus, for instance, they were characterized in the US. We made the master banks there, so we were very confident that could be used, and that is an approved cell line with the national regulatory authorities. The second one was that uh, we also got the virus characterized. So this took a lot of time. You were mentioning it took uh, uh, so many years for us to do that. I think we spent a lot of time trying to see that this virus would get approved by the national regulatory authorities. So there's enormous amount of uh, data had to be given. If I may tell you that we, we submitted to the Dutch Control Authority 60 volumes of documents to get the licensure for this vaccine, containing so much of uh, information on that. Uh, and then the, what, what we feel at Barth Biotech is that because we had the support, we had the encouragement from the government sector and also from the international communities and then uh, the funding agencies, for instance, they were totally convinced that yes, there is a product which on, on which they could uh, bank on it. That's the reason we got very generous funds from the Gates Foundation through PATH. We had funds from uh, Department of Biotechnology. We had funds from the UK's uh, DFIT. We had uh, funds from Norway, plus PATH uh, funds. And that's, this is a possibility because of all this kind of a funding, we were able to de-risk our company from uh, you know, keeping the price at low. I think that was one of the reasons why we are able to. Uh, I, I must tell you at this point that um, our chairman, Dr. Krishna Allah, uh, announced uh, way back in 2000 that he would make uh, he would uh, uh, make this vaccine available to one dollar in 2000 itself when we just began our journey, and he's still holding on to it. <laughs> Tremendous. Um, any question from the audience for Dr. Harshvardhan? Yes. Uh, Dr. Harshwadhan, we have so much uh, problem in India, uh, especially for dengue, chikungunya, malaria. Why the Indian, like you, you have done a wonderful job for the vaccine. Are you planning any vaccine for dengue or chikungunya? Um, yes, sir. We did undertake uh, some research projects on dengue some years ago, and it's a complex vaccine with four uh, serotypes there. And one of them is uh, difficult to make it into a good vaccine. I think work is still going on in many laboratories in our country, especially in uh, ICGB, for instance, in Delhi. And uh, we probably will take up the project again. We have a strong pipeline of chikungunya vaccine, for instance. We are, we are almost getting into phase one trial at, uh, in, in, in our country. Uh, we have uh, uh, HPVs coming up and uh, combination of the, these uh, vaccines. We are into in a very strong way, for sure. Dengue is a difficult vaccine. So when a country like Malaysia can develop, they're developing their own vaccine for dengue so with the help of uh, Johnson Johnson, with the help of Bavarian Nordic. Why the Indian companies or Indian government is not looking for collaborative research? Which, this is a national problem. Yeah. So many people are dying of silly mosquitoes, you know. And uh, we should take it more, I think, in a broader way and get international expertise on board in solving the national our problem for the country. Yeah, uh, sir, in recent uh, times, I think most of the uh, vaccine manufacturers and other scientific institutions are actively into developing vaccines, for sure. Uh, there is a lot of surge in trying to make this vaccine happen. Uh, not only the underutilized vaccine, but also new vaccines. It is, I think you will be surprised in course of time, we will be coming out. Indian vaccine manufacturers will come out with new vaccines, for sure. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.